me about KZN. Like, how do you get involved in the culture coming from KZN? I mean, the culture there is, is kind of non-existent. Um, fair enough, there are a select group of people or a few people who are pushing the movement. Um, but generally, it's very small. So, so starting, obviously, in the dance scene and coming from there, you almost didn't know if this thing existed. You know, you're, you were pushing at a craft or, or trying to be involved in something that you weren't sure existed. So you see it on TV, you see it online, but does this thing exist? And only once I moved to Joburg did I realize, wow, there is an entire community of this thing. And obviously, being exposed here, yeah, then I see globally this thing is massive. But the Durban scene as a whole is quite tiny, and I don't know what that reason is. I don't know if that's because industry is... I don't know if it's because the running narrative is that Durban doesn't have the skills or possess the kind of backbone that like a Joburg person would have. I don't know what it is, but it's growing. So that's a plus. <laughs> and you got like, um, like your business card's pretty long. Yes. Dancer, <laughs> choreographer, creative director, DJ. Part-time roaster. Part-time roaster. You know. I where, <laughs> where, do the, where do the influences come from? And like, are you still planning on growing that or your title? Definitely, I feel like you know that saying of um, being a master of none? Yeah. I felt like that held everybody back in the past. So we had to I'm pick one thing, them. right? Yeah. We had to pick one thing and kind of stick to it. And um, growing up, that was the path I needed to take. These days, my mother will still say, what are you doing? When are you going to get a job? I'm like, bro, can you or, not see? What do you do? What? Yeah, nobody knows what I do. Um, <laughs> and funny, I don't think I know what I do, right? But um, so that was, and just coming from where we come from, we had limited options. So it was like, study, pick a job, you're safe. Yeah. Um, so that was almost what I fell into in the beginning. I love business, I studied business. Um, but only once I started tucking into who I was, which is what everybody made me feel weird for. Why are you the girl that's in the track pants? Why are you the girl running up walls? Um, why are you hanging with boys? Why are you playing soccer? Why are you doing kickboxing? Not realizing that even though these things are little activities or like little extra murals, these are the things that kind of set you up for life. So if I didn't have a backbone back then to say, actually, I am going to do kickboxing. Actually, I am going to be that girl in the, soc in the male soccer team, you know? Mm. That's what set me up to go now. Cool, I don't mind that there's only males at this table. You know, um, yeah. so people don't realize that that preconditioning um, in the smallest of things. So once I tucked in, I realized actually, cool, I'm good at this thing. You know, and there's there's a little bit of a gap in the market for me. Before before you move further, yeah, like breaking, like yeah. what made you go breaking? Because there are like an infinite number of dance houses. Of course, what yeah. Where did you go? Um, I can't even say that it was like a, a decision. It kind of chose me. So what it was again, my background, gymnastics, kickboxing. Um, so I, I, I always had the physical strength, I think. Yeah. Um, and then looking at it, I think I had seen some b-boys maybe on TV or whatever, and I was like, how can you do that thing, man? Why, why is there no girls doing this thing? So it started by me just wanting to be that cool. And then I realized, actually, I'm picking this thing up a little bit faster. Yeah. Um, and then people started commenting, that's not bad, that's not bad. Um, obviously not giving you enough props, because I don't want you to think that you could actually do this thing. Um, so that's kind of how it happened. Uh, so I can't really say that I decided to do it. Um, because again, like having conversations with my mother, for example, where are you going to dance? How are you going to make money? Mm. Those are questions I couldn't answer myself. I don't know. I mean, I could dance on the beachfront. <laughs> what I like about you is you don't consider yourself a female breaker. You don't have to break. No. You yeah, can yeah. go up against anybody, yeah. you know? And talk to me about the creativity that comes with it. Because that's the thing I love about hip hop culture. Yeah. You know, it's we always see the end product, but the flair. How did you get there to begin and with? The sound yeah, yeah. And, and just the look of it. You so know, I think so like my consider. creative process, I think, is a little bit different to most b boys or b girls, um, because that style is quite specific, um, and most people, most of the people that do that dance style don't do anything else. Mm. So coming from Durban and having, um, my, so I've never had dance training, so I've never had this like structured. For real? Like, yeah. No. Who could afford it? Yeah. Imagine, mom. Yeah. Please hook me up with 500 bucks for the month. I'm going to do you what? You're going to dance. There's the TV. There's the lounge. You can dance in the lounge. Do you know? <laughs> and you pay us to sit and watch you. You know, so that was the attitude. And it's just like, again, if this thing is not going to make you money in the future, why are you doing this? Mm. The mindset, limited options, be smart courts. Why are you trying to dance? We need you to have a job. We need you to be able to survive. We don't have your back like that, um, you know? So. I think my creative process, um, like I said, not having a structured background, my first professional jobs were Bollywood shows. For real? <sighs> what up, Derbs? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Wait, was it? Were you doing Bollywood style dancing? Yes. But in break form? No. Just I was doing Bollywood. classical Bollywood. Um, again, I could pick it up, maybe not having a structured background. And what they did in that show was then give me um, two routines to choreograph, yeah. and then I got to break. Again, I had no dance training. I didn't know if what I was even doing was breaking. I just knew I could do some cool tricks that people thought, hey, cool, it's a vibe. So we'll give you like two minutes to do this thing. Um, I'm from Durban, so you must know I love my house, you yeah. know, and I love African influences. So my process when I'm breaking is to add all of that. So for me, that's my process, is making sure that I'm super true to who I am and my influence. So B-Boys would generally make me feel bad. Why are you dancing so much? I like it. I'm good at it. I enjoy the music. So I, I really need to always push through exactly what I'm feeling and not play to the narrative of what people expect that style to be, yeah, that yeah, female yeah. to be, that brand to be, that person to be. I like that. Mm. Talk about brand. Um, you've, got a, you've got a powerful personal brand, actually. I'll and take that. No, no, you do. You do. You've got a powerful <laughs> person. You go into any of your platforms, you go into your website, mm. you always, even this, I mean, you're wearing your own, this is your own merch. I mean, I mean that's come on, yours, man. <laughs> that's your own merch. And um, you, you it, it doesn't seem forced at all. Like, it's yes. just so tight. You know exactly what you want. Um, talk to us about building that personal brand what's that about again that was a struggle and a half because you always filled with this are people gonna like it mm. wow so many people have shut the door before me how am, how am i gonna make this work so now even the thing of wearing my own merch i'm not trying to sell it i'm not trying to push it on people i'm finally comfortable with me yeah that's what this is um if i can rock the pumas and the cuppers and the this and why can't i show up for myself why mm. is that why is that weird you know but it, it just shows the conditioning and again where I come from in the in the mindset and the mentality and it's not speaking to necessarily the community but even my home life mm. where limited options mindset is like this so we can only make it this far yeah and for me every time I make it a step further it opens my mind to how much more I can do so in terms of my personal brand it's been such a journey of getting to a place where I can finally be okay with who I am. I'm okay that I'm different. In the beginning, it was odd because I get you, fresh out of Durban, no dance training, I'm trying to get gigs. I'm not the girl in the hot shorts. Mm. That's 90% of the work gone, mm. right? I go, let's say, corporate, um, and I always speak about this, my first massive gig, Samsung, cool, all the top dancers in the industry, I'm losing my mind. They say, 10 guys, 10 girls, fresh. Of course, you get a solo, fresh, yes. Okay, cool, here's your outfit. Fishnets and blue hot shorts, cause it's more Samsung. <laughs> I said, <laughs> wow, um, I said, sorry, sir. I don't wear that. One, I'm not comfortable, and two, it's not the style, like my personal style, I get it's not about me, but also I've got a solo. It's not the style of my dance. Mm. Uh, so he said, okay, cool. Well, the stylist said, cool. If you don't wear this, you gotta bounce. So I'm thinking, damn, I need the money. I need a job more than anything. What do I do now? What do I compromise? So I said, I'm so sorry. Secretly crying inside. I gotta go. Like, it's not gonna work. Okay, cool. I go home, crying my guts out because I'm like, wow, what am I gonna do? Two hours later, stylist calls. Hi, are you home? So I'm like, yes. She's like, I need to pick up a pair of your pants. I'm like, yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> they then made me these drop crotch pants. Um, and I look at those photos and I laugh. All the girls in their hot shorts, um, fishnets, Da, 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 the guys in their blue outfits and then there's me standing in the center and I can That's imagine cool. anybody looking at that they must have thought what the hell is going on here like it made no sense cool. but that was a defining moment for me when I realized actually I've got to treat people how to teach me because I'm creating a path that wasn't there before like I said earlier if I've got high-ish demands in a sense that I go guys on set can I please have two bottles of water wow don't work with her she's a diva you know it has to fit that because it can't just be a female that wants water yeah, on set. Exactly, you, know? but you also kind of know, you've defined what you want. Yeah. You know so I mean? it's been a journey and this is where I am now. And I think the power only like, came to pass once I, once I tucked into it and got past all the, the doubt that everybody else was putting on me. That's amazing, man. And so how do you make the, the, the crossover now from mm. dancer yeah. to choreographer, which is mm. like a, that, that synergy seems seamless. Yeah. Right? To creative director. Yeah to DJ. Yeah. Talk to me about the creative director bit. So that, you know, I find, um, I feel like for the most part, if you're a creative, that's just what you are. And it's kind of just what you do, you know, like unconsciously. So I yeah. found myself working on different accounts and running the business that I do. Um, the briefs that were landed in my lap, 
and seeing kind of how people piece these things together and going, but no, I can kind of do this better. Fair enough, I don't have the, the technical background or you know the agency background, whatever, but being on the ground, especially being, if I've worked on campaigns, let's say for a Sprite or an Essex, I understand the street value in that. So having studied business then gives me the understanding of how I'm going to get the return on this. Got you. And kind of just putting all these things together and going, fine if I'm not in front of the camera all the time. It doesn't mean that I can't be behind the scenes making it work. Mm. So for me, um, I like to think of myself as just an all-round creative and all-round artist and being able to make it sus sustainable in the long run. Um, I can't dance all the time. Um, yeah, dancing yeah. is not... It's not like music, for example, where it can be on the radio or yeah, it can, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I yeah. can't just be here yeah, dancing, ah, ah, ah. You know, so there has to be something else to me. And, and um, where all that came from is, again, just tucking into who I am and not being scared to be good at things. You've, you found a great way to bring all your powers together. Everything that you're super strong, that you're super strong at. But for me, I think the most important thing, the most fundamental thing is, because this is the stigma around yeah. creative people is money. Mm. and business we mm. don't like to think about that kind of <laughs> stuff so you actually have that extra car that you can throw yeah. in and that's why you're able to tie all your all your and all the your, sad thing is like together. like monetizing dance they yeah. were like you sell out ah you're selling the culture you okay cool i hear you yeah. how else am i going to expose this thing mm. if not on tv if not being on radio if not being in a magazine people didn't know that girls could break dance here. Yes, around the world, okay, cool, but locally, people didn't know this thing existed. You know, if rappers can be making money off whatever and DJs can be living like this, why are dancers the ones to struggle? Because of that, that conditioning, that it is conditioning. A conditioning. So I'm gonna drive the Audi and I'm gonna live in Santon. Okay, cool, off what? Off dance, why not? You know, and I think it held me back for a long time, that struggle between, do I, do I get paid to dance or like, do I do it for the love? I don't see why I can't do both. It's a general artist's thing. Yeah. You know, I think artists are always made to believe that this is it's a hobby. It's for passion. Yeah. Mm. And, or and for exposure. Oh, <laughs> the swear you know? word. Ah, the damn swear it. Word. <laughs> My ears bleed when I hear what that. What would you say to people though? What would you say to people? Anybody wanting to, doesn't matter mm. what, 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 what form of expression it is, what the art form is. Um, what are your parting words? For people wanting to be creative? Yeah, or no, just wanting to push themselves a little bit and really put themselves out there, which is the one thing I admire most about you, is that you put all of yourself out there and you're consistent every single time. I Everybody mean, will tell the same story about you. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to think that. Um, but again, it's, it's really just... Sometimes just lean into yourself, man. I, f I find my biggest setbacks came from asking everybody else for advice until I realized that people can't take you where they've never been. People can never, like I always expected more out of people. Like, Don, what are your thoughts on this? Or, like, what do you see for me? And then they just like, I'm not sure, ba 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 ba, you know? And people tend to place their own limitations on you. So in terms of creatives and kind of just putting themselves out there, they really just have to do it. Um, mm. I mean, it is as simple as You know, that. it's really just that, but again, it's this internal struggle. So the moment you kind of decide what you want to do, you, you find the strength within yourself, there's literally nothing that can stop you there after. So I would just say the first step to starting is to just take that first step. That's, the, that's been the biggest thing for me. Whenever I feel like I don't know where I'm going next, I go back to basics.